contribute to my local school board meetings for the last six years. Not, not an administrator, not a teacher, the only one there. Please listen to Stan because things, you can change things and you can help them see another side of the picture. If I, if I could just take a few minutes, I'll pass this around. The county has got another thing going that, that makes a lot of sense and I think the league should, should be, could be and should be involved. They did not have long range plans since 1977. And so a new long range plan is in the making and the people who are in charge are looking for local input. There is to be a meeting tomorrow night uh, with Randall Arndt, A-R-E-N-D-T. Google that name, he has an incredible resume. He's a great speaker. The tomorrow nights will be at Chicago Lake Central School Auditorium at five, so you will be able to get home <laughs> for a certain discussion that's going to happen later on. There are other meetings, and instead of taking up time, I'll circulate this if you're interested in what's happening locally with some very, very good people, please, make a note of it on your calendar. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll echo what she says. She she has done a phenomenal job for some of our residents who are not uh, voters in Chautauqua County, predominantly at Chautauqua Institution, by giving us the benefit of her observation. Not, I'm, I'm a resident and voter, but many of their property owners there are not. And, and she's just done a phenomenal job of making people there more aware of the local circumstances. I'd like to uh, make this statement about how it was that I became a member of the League of Women Voters. And that was a good number of years ago, uh, I was given an award because I was the only person he knew that had been married to two League of Women Voter Presidents. <laughs> Not at the same time. <laughs> Not at the same time. <laughs> and uh, then people recognized what I would ask at each one or any one of the uh, League of Women Voters where they had the candidates on the, on the platform. And the situation was, what I would do is ask them, how would they join the, uh, the town of Pomfret, for example, with another town? Because having grown up in the Midwest, I knew that these towns, Fredonia and other towns, were back to the horse and buggy days. and. Why couldn't we consolidate? And so this is a question that I had each year that there were people waiting for, for uh, jobs. Well, the answer is we could and we should. You know, my epiphany had happened. Here I had been a mayor. I mean, deeply involved in local government, obviously. And when we, when I was first elected to Congress, we moved the family to Reston, Virginia. And I was waiting at the school bus, uh, for the uh, commuter bus one day. And uh, I thought, you know, I don't think Reston is a village. I'm not sure what town this is in. I was one of those, like the Chautauquans that you know, paid taxes there, but obviously I didn't vote there. And uh, I got to thinking about it, and I came home. I did talk to Bill Perman, I remember that, but I did a little research. And you know, it goes back to the founding of, the, of our country. And the southern colonies had counties, and the New England colonies had townships. And New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania adopted everything. And we've been saddled with oh too much government ever since, and and so it's really historic, and it's about time. You know, every two hundred years or so, you should really take a look at it. Yeah. Well, you mentioned something about possibly the.
commissioner having some kind of mandatory power to consolidate. And I would say, as much as people hate that, it's the only thing that's going to work. I would work for years in Erie County on trying to consolidate a library system that was a total wreck. And people hang on for dear life. They don't care if there's only six people in the library a month. They don't want to give up their library. And I'd say it has to be mandatory. I, I, I couldn't agree with you anymore. I, I, I said I overcame a prejudice against them. Um, in some cases, you need, and incidentally, we don't just say he has the power to just do it. He has to find criteria, you know, declining enrollment, high tax burden, low student performance. You know, there has to be some objective criteria that are met, but you're absolutely right. And I'm afraid for all the talk that's going on and good things that are going on, nothing much will happen unless ultimately, I mean, big thing. And, uh, oh, going back to my experience in Virginia, Fairfax County, Virginia, has one million people. And they have two school districts. They have one countywide school district, and then Falls Church is a separate city, so they, they do have a separate one. But if they can get along in a million people with basically a single school district, do we really need 18 in Chautauqua County? But I, I don't think I'll live to see the day when we, but I hope that these people that I've been talking to take some initiative, and I hope you'll become involved. But uh, that, that I really, truly do believe in the mandate. One more. Stan, one more consolidation that I think would have a tremendous impact on everybody in Chautauqua County was if we had one newspaper instead of a South County newspaper and a North County newspaper. That helps keep that divider slightly south of Casadega. If we were getting the same news, the same information, the same articles as they were getting in the South County, I think this whole effort of consolidation might get a little shove. 